top five habits that are destroying your teeth with Dr. John Yu. Please consider smashing the like button so that YouTube knows I'm trying my best. Today I'm going to reveal information that's going to put me out of business that will save you thousands and force me to go into K-pop. Well, which group? Important question. I figure my odds are higher auditioning for BTS over Blackpink because there's seven of them. So an eighth wouldn't be a big deal. That's my reasoning. But Blackpink, if you're watching this video, being the guy in the group could bring much needed gender diversity. Now going back to how I can save you thousands. Your teeth have very limited capacity for regrowth. Once you damage your tooth, your dentist has to fix it. And there's no guarantee that it will ever be as healthy as it once was. Chances are it's now weaker and more prone to receiving more treatment to maintain the health of the tooth. Scary, I know. And in a way, it's very unfair. You get your first adult tooth when you're six years old. How can you ever trust a six-year-old to take care of something that has to last a hundred years? The good news is that you're not six years old. You're old enough now to apply good habits and get rid of bad ones. These habits add up over the years, much like compounded interest. So let's go through my top five bad habits to break. Bad habit number one, brushing immediately after you eat or drink something acidic. I commend the effort. But the research shows that you should wait 30 minutes. Why, you may ask? Cue the almighty Stephen Curry. Oh, I mean Stephen's curve. This may be the most well-recognized graph to dentists. When the acidity of your mouth dips below 5.5, the outer layer of your tooth, enamel, undergoes demineralization. If you rub your teeth frantically while the enamel is in demineralization phase, you can wear away your enamel. So what helps the pH of your mouth to go back up? above 5.5. Bingo! Saliva and time. Saliva is a natural buffer that will bring this up. And these are some time frames for how long saliva needs to work in order for the pH to go back up to normal levels. In the meantime, you can rinse your mouth with water to get rid of some of the debris and to help uh, wash away some of the acids. On to the next. Number two bad habit. Chewing on hard things or using your teeth as tools. Your teeth are not tools. I see both kids and adults doing this. You won't imagine how many teeth have to be pulled because of the way that they fracture. Not all cracks are equal in severity. Take a look at these different fractures. If the fracture goes along the length of the root, below the crown, you can't fix it. The treatment is to extract or remove the tooth and in ideal circumstances place an implant. This could cost $5,000. Very avoidable. If the tooth cracks and it can be saved, it could still cost a lot. And even if you've been fortunate to not fracture your tooth, you can develop pain symptoms associated with the trauma of the occlusion, the way that you're biting on hard surfaces. So common objects that people chew on that fracture teeth, ice, popcorn seats, very hard granola, the eraser end of a pencil or pen. If a hot girl at the bar brings you her beer bottle and says, can you open this with your teeth? Walk away, tell her you're taken. Tell her you're in a loving relationship with your teeth. You don't got time for that. You're better than that. Kri. Bye, Felicia. <laughs> Number three, bad habit. Frequently snacking. This includes acidic beverages. One of the questions we ask parents at a child's dental visit is how often they drink juice or Gatorade throughout the day. Parents see these as good sources of vitamins and electrolytes. True, but from a dental perspective, if they're consuming this stuff frequently throughout the day, the teeth are constantly exposed to acidic environments. Remember that pH of less than 5.5. And you can see in this graph here that is dipping below 5.5 repeatedly throughout the day, undergoing that demineralization process, not allowing the saliva to do its job. We're not saying don't eat, don't snack, don't enjoy the finer things in life. Although, sometimes my parents you know just, just try to limit it. Uh, because once you understand what's happening on a microscopic level, you can see how it's more harmful from a tooth's perspective to nibble on a chocolate bar all day as opposed to eating it in one sitting. Many pediatric dentists on Halloween encourage parents to let little Johnny eat all the candy they want that one night and then to get rid of the rest. 
This is, of course, barring any medical conditions. We're not encouraging diabetics to consume 50 chocolate bars in one sitting. Because if the inventory of candy lasts throughout the whole year, then the kid is exposed to constant fluctuations of demineralization. Right? Number two bad habit, brushing improperly. This is such a big topic that is traditionally very boring. Let's face it, you've heard about brushing your teeth and flossing since you were a toddler. And no matter how interesting we try to make it, it's not that sexy of a topic. Which is why I think most people are either unaware or uninterested about learning it the right way. All right? So this is how most people brush their teeth. Most people brush like this, okay? Boom, boom, boom. They're probably watching YouTube or looking at themselves in the mirror, thinking about different things during those two minutes. By brushing your teeth like this, you can cause gingival recession or receding gum lines. And to fix really bad cases of those can require gum grafts, where you take gum tissue from somewhere else in the mouth and you stitch it on to where you've receded away, your gingiva. It's not very fun. Take a look in the mirror, see if you have any signs of receding gum lines, and it may be possible that you're brushing improperly. I might do a whole video about proper oral hygiene techniques. And number one bad habit is grinding your teeth. If you find yourself grinding your teeth and you don't use protective Nicard, your teeth can look like a grandpa's by the time you hit your 30s. Most people are aware that they brux or grind their teeth. But the issue is that some people don't see it as a huge problem because they've been doing it for their whole lives. Uh, Carlos, as yeah. an informed patient, looked up possible solutions. Did you feel that you were grinding, you were grinding away some of your teeth structure? Yeah, after a while I've noticed that my teeth are kind of straight all the way around in my front teeth. That's not normal because mm. I see other people and they have yeah, the, the mountains. Yeah, the, the mountains. So I searched up a couple of things. Dude, good for you, like, man. And I was like, so, and then I searched up bruxism. So when I went to the dentist, he's like, yeah, you do have bruxism. Mm. And then after that, I got my night guard. There's a very straightforward solution to this problem. That's using a night guard. Your, your dentist can make a custom mouth guard for you so that it fits perfectly. Of course, we recommend ones that fit and are suitable for your teeth. But if you're strapped for expenses, perhaps you can try the generic one and then follow up with your dentist to see if it's working. The absolute best way to treat bruxism is to identify the source of why you're grinding your teeth. Many times it could be a combination of uh, stress, anxiety, oral habits that you develop over time, like the need to chew on things. It's different for each person, but I've had patients who were very motivated to stop grinding. And eventually, over time, they got rid of that habit. So it may be tough, but it's possible. I hope you found this useful. Please share this with your friends or anyone who does any of these things. So these are five bad habits that may apply to you. If none of them do, cool, you're doing a great job. It makes me really sad when parents and their kids come into the dental office and the parent says to me, Doc, do whatever you can. I don't want his teeth to end up like mine. So like many things, a lot of people will realize the importance of something after it's gone. I want this to be a reminder that your teeth are long-term investments. I want to make sure that we're helping you stay on the right track. All right. Well, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Dr. John Yu here. S2020 is coming right around the corner. Best wishes to everyone. Good luck in all your endeavors.